So, boom, today what we're going to react to is Dr. Umar and his definition of love and him explaining love and things of that nature. Let's get into it. How would you define love? When you truly love somebody, truly, here's the thing about love. Love is unconditional. That's the first thing I want to say. Is it really? Love is unconditional. If it's conditions on it, it ain't love. It's a contract. And that's okay if both of you agree on those terms. She may agree. We have a pleasure contract. We got an economic contract where you're going to take care of me. And as long as you take care of me, I'm going to be your woman. The puff daddy arrangement. You feel me? So boom off top, I'm going to disagree with a few things. So the first thing is that love is unconditional. If love was unconditional, we wouldn't have to identify unconditional love. We wouldn't have to distinct what unconditional love is. He's going to get into some more things. But one thing I do think as far as what love is, love is a verb. Love is not necessarily how you feel, but love is the things that you do. The things that your feelings compel you to do in regards to other people. Now, the other thing about this, which really messes this whole thing up and which is really why you cannot really have a concrete discussion about love ever, ever is because love is subjective. So love is whatever you want it to be. You go around and you ask 100 people in 20 words or in 10 words, tell me what love is. There are going to be a bunch of different definitions. Even if you just give people the free range to say whatever they want, it's going to be a bunch of different definitions. So love is subjective. Now, the other thing about him saying it's a contract you have to look at marriage. He says that love doesn't come with conditions and things like that. Well, people look at marriage like it's some love thing, like it's just a, it found, the foundation of marriage is love. But when you look at the U.S., it's a contract. Because if you don't have a prenup, even if you do have a prenup, it can get thrown out. You see that happening left and right. But if you don't have a prenup, you then have to go to court and divide everything. And that's when the conditions come and even then i believe conditions are established before that even in regular relationships and stuff like that because again i believe i'll get into my philosophies a bit later that works for some people no you have women like that you have men like that right, right. i'm going to floss you up and as long as i floss you up you're gonna be loyal to me but that's a contract that's not love contracts are different from love why contracts are conditional right. love is unconditional if I love my queen, what if she comes home one day and say, hey, baby, uh, I don't want to work this. I don't want to be a lawyer no more. But if I only married her because I like the way her law degree looks on Dr. Umar in public, you see how this goes. She's changing. But if I love her, OK, baby, that's what you don't want to do. You want to go into something else. Let's do it. Love is un when you love somebody, you are 100 percent unapologetically and unconditionally committed to that person's best interest, even if it is to your loss. So the first thing we're going to break down is these conditions and the contract thing that he says, you know, like I said, love is subjective. Love is fluffy. Chicks love to talk about unconditional love and things like that. But when you talk about this, the one thing that's not as subjective is relationship dynamics, how relationships actually work. So when you look at an actual relationship, for you to even mess with somebody, there has to be something there. You have to be attracted to them. For some man to commit to a woman and for some woman to commit to a man, there has to be something compelling that is even deeper than the attraction in some cases, like, oh, actual value that a person brings to the table. So let's discuss that very quickly as far as how those things work. So when we look at attraction, we'll say, OK, you know, attraction and, you know, providing value. So, boom, you have a female who likes a man because he is handsome. He is funny. He's a leader, all that good stuff. But on top of that, he's a business owner and makes a lot of money. So what does that mean? She's attracted to him as far as his personality and also, as far as the value that he brings, he can provide for her and give her security as far as life. 
Now, when she actually gets with him and they commit to each other, over the course of time, he begins to make bad decisions financially. He fucks up the money. He then gets them living in the projects. And then she actually sees weakness in this man. She actually sees that he's not a good leader. That goes against what attracted her to him and also the value that he was providing for her. So if she leaves, it makes sense. He's not the guy that she got with. That's not what she fell in love with as far as him. Because some of those things are inherently in him as far as him being funny, a good leader, et cetera, et cetera. She found out that's not really him. There might even be other flaws that overpower that. But that's that's how that works. Let's go to a man. A man has a woman who is submissive, very cooperative and stuff like that. Very sexy. And she gives great sex. She has great sex. The man values that a lot, all of that. And, and she brings a lot of value to his life. So the attraction is the physical and stuff like that. But the submissiveness and the sex, that's the actual value that she brings. He commits to her over the course of time. This shit gains 600 pounds. And then on top of her gaining 600 pounds, she stops fucking him. Value and attraction gone out the window. He's going to be done. So with that, that like that's how relationships actually work. And if you look at any relationship, even friendships, even if you just enjoy somebody's company, there is something there. As far as a common ground, it's something mutual, it's some type of value exchange. There, there is something there that compels you to fuck with this person. You may not be aware of it. You might not even be capable of being aware of it. But something is almost always there. Now, this is the other thing about conditions, because he said it's unconditional. That's bullshit. And I'm going to tell you why. What if that person cheats on you? What if that person cheats on you? They don't love you now? I thought there were no conditions. So loyalty is a condition. Loyalty is a condition. If there were no conditions, then it wouldn't matter what that because because remember, he said, even if it's not in your own best interest. So if your girl is getting cock slammed into her by another dude and it makes her happy and that's against your best interest, there are no conditions. You shouldn't expect your girl to be loyal. You shouldn't expect it because because now you're putting a contract on because that's a condition. Now, you might say, oh, that's ridiculous. You're, you, you sound ridiculous. You sound dumb. But that's the thing. When you look at it logically, he said no conditions. He didn't say, you know, there are very few conditions. He said no conditions, unconditional, no conditions whatsoever. I did that to show you that there are conditions. And if cheating can be a condition, why can't losing the things that made me love you be a condition? Why can't you turning into somebody that goes completely against what I liked about you or loved about you be a condition? It's ridiculous. But see, this is what it is and this is what it does. He is pandering to women. You're going to notice something in the next example that we're going to play. I'm going to see if you notice it. What if your fiance come home and say, listen, babe, I had a long conversation with my ex-husband. I never thought I would look at this again, but we left a lot on the table together. I enjoyed the time we had. I think that man might still be my soulmate. I got to move on. I might still hurt. Because I loved her, right? But if that love is true, if you feel that's who you meant to spend the rest of your life with, I got to love you and want the best for you. Most of us cannot do that. Now, I want you to think very quickly. What are two things that those two examples that he gave, the, the second one in that second clip and then the one in the clip before I started talking the last time, what do those two have in common? I'll give you two seconds. You can pause it. What both of those clips have in common is the man is at odds in both of the examples. 
if you take those examples and you flip them like, you know, the man isn't making the money. Oh, you should stick with the man. That sounds noble, but it doesn't sound sexy. It doesn't pander to independent women who make more than their men and, you know, deal with relationship issues similar to that. It doesn't pander to women in that way. But the second one, if your woman has somebody that they love, you should let her go to that person that they love. It just you should embrace that because you love her. You want the best. With Flip that. Flip that. Imagine somebody telling women, look. If your man is in love with somebody and you deeply in love with him and you want the best for him, you just want the best for your man. You should say, bro, since your love is true. Go be with that other bitch. Ain't no bitch eating that shit up if it's flipped around. What this does is it feeds the woman's ego. That's what this is. It feeds the woman that loves to be pandered to's ego. His definition of love pretty much caters to the take me take me as I am. You know, and it also gives them the leeway to just do whatever you want. Your man should accept you at all times. This it, He didn't do an example where the woman was at odds because he knows what's at stake for him. He's donations. He's a pander. That's what he does. He gets on these podcasts and panders to black women so that they can fuck with them more. And give them donations. That's just what it is. That's the real because it's ridiculous. This whole clip is ridiculous. What we call love is limited to your investment in me. Mm. You see that? Yeah. Anytime they step outside of the box we created for them, we get angry because that was not love. You had conditions on it. Your woman gained 20 pounds. Now you're going to divorce her. You say, if you gain another 20 pounds, this marriage is over. That was not love. That was a contract because it had conditions. If I love that woman unconditionally, whether she gained 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, I'm not going nowhere. Now, we might need to have a conversation about her health because I want you around for our children to get married. You understand? Right. But there's no such thing as ending a relationship because you stepped outside of my perfect box if you loved her. Love is unconditional. And most of what we got in the black community are contracts disguised as loving relationship so let's go over these examples again a woman wants to make a career change man should accept that a woman wants to end the relationship because she loves another man you should accept that your girl gets fat. You can't leave her because she get fat, but she can leave you because she loves another nigga. It's amazing. It's amazing how you spews this bullshit. It's amazing. And, and, and the person who posted it and everybody who fucked. Oh, man, this is just man. He is spitting. He is spitting facts. This is really facts. It's bullshit. It's flat out bullshit. I'm not even going to get deep on the because there, there was another point that I wanted to make earlier about doing things to your detriment. The number one law of human nature is self-preservation. That's what people are going to go for all time. And if you look at the divorce rates and stuff like that, the women, you, you, you've seen the statistics, you heard the statistics. They foul at a much higher rate, somewhere in the 70 percentile range than men. So when it comes down to that, you know, we could sit here and talk about how love is unconditional and all this stuff and how it's fluffy and make you feel butterflies and how you should accept anything that a woman does. And who gives a fuck about making an example of, you know, a man or a woman being at odds and having to make a tough decision and accepting her man and all the fuck making an example about that. Let's get these donations. Let's pander to these women. Let's pander to these women. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. But when it comes to doing things against your own detriment, most humans in most situations are not going to do things that are to their own detriment, especially in a relationship. 
Now, if it's a small thing like making a little sacrifice or some type of sacrifice for the relationship, that's understandable. But if it's something major, something that's going to take you from a penthouse to the projects or even from a penthouse to a condo where the hood boogers be at and shit like you're, bruh, that shit would devastate a relationship. People like to act like money doesn't matter in relationships. People like to act like conditions don't exist where love is. And it's just not true. It's just not true. So with that being said, that's the video. I'm out.